Hello, everyone. I am in a uh, basement room at the Prudential Center. Above us is the LCS finals, which are about to take place in about uh, two hours or so. But I'm joined right now by two people who I've not had the pleasure of inter interviewing previously, Raul and Carlos. I love uh, because, you know, titles at Riot, they're so long. If you can uh, both introduce yourselves, I know one of you has a very new title. All right, I'll kick it off. My name is Raul Fernandez. I'm head of esports operations for the Americas. Hello, I'm Carlos Antunes. I'm head of League of Legends Esports for the Americas. Yes. Well, two apologies for both of you. One, we only have the one mic you're going to have to share. We uh, are traveling right now, so my normal setup is not there. Two, uh, I we were trying to lock down an interview with Nas and John. John has dodged, so now you get to deal with a lot of questions that uh, you'll have to answer for uh, your boss and stuff that he has said previously. So uh, apologies uh, for that. I'd love to interview Nas and John in the future if they become available, but happy to be chatting with both of you. Um, so first off, we just are coming off of the uh, press conference backstage uh, with uh, you and, and the team owners, etc. I'd love to just kind of kick this off by asking you in general, what do you think of the current health of the LO ecosystem as it stands at the end of the 2023 season? Do you want me to kick things off? Perfect. So, um, in general, I think the tone and the changes that we've made to the LCS have been positively received. Sentiment has increased. Stickiness has improved uh, as well. Viewership is not where we want it to be, uh, in all honesty. But I think the sentiment and just... The, 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 the results that we've seen so far are encouraging. Again, there's still a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of information for us to digest, to properly analyze what we can double down on, what we need to kill, and what we need to improve on. Yeah. Uh, Carlos? Uh, sure. Uh, I think that when we look in the like recent past, in the last few years, we have been coming on a trend that sometimes it also also other regions about uh, decaying viewership and engagement. Uh, we have been working globally on in terms of renewing the sport, and that comes with changes in the structure, but mostly with the experience that we deliver to fans. So this was the very heart of what we wanted to do with the LCS this year, and when we said it, we're going to reposition as an entertainment platform that means we're gonna change the way we want fans to see us and we want to be relevant to fans so when we look at the state that we brought the lcs this year and we see spontaneous feedback from fans on things that we are doing better this makes us uh a lot more confident that this is the right way to to get the product to get fans excited about tuning in and watching us and obviously, uh, as Raul said, we do have to make a better job at marketing and reaching out to the fans and making people wanting to watch the LCS and check the new LCS. So this is a part of the work that we are definitely focused on. But we see that we are landing in a place where we interrupted the trend and we are seeing fans proud of the LCS. So we are proud of it, but we know there's a lot of work to do to get us back to where we know that the LCS has to be. We were just in the other room, and on stage were three LCS team owners, but also Toast from Disguised, uh, who he's part of this new trend where we see a lot of these influencers uh, running esports orgs. Given the rise of these orgs and seem, what seems to be a, a high amount of popularity, I heard that uh, the arena did great sales for that NACL finals, despite it being the tier two reg or tier two uh, tournament that people don't usually follow. Are, is the LCS reaching out to any of these orgs like Moist um, and others to have them potentially try to come into the league as partners? Uh, we are discussing uh, as Riot, as Lolly Sports, to, uh, to the streamers and to all new uh, players in our ecosystem. So we are very happy to see that this year we have narrowed the gap between streamers, influencers, and not only as content creators, but also as org. Uh, executives and owners so we are exploring with these uh, partners what could be the future of the sport so on tier two we already saw like not only the 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 interests of the fans on it like viewership and engagement but also they want i mean there is something else in there in terms of making that organization something 
aspirant pro players want to be a part of and get into the system. So we're definitely looking for streamers and influencers in a brand new way. So it goes from partnering as team owners and executives and looking at tier one or tier two as a way to start, uh, but also collaborating with a number of other content experiences. So it's not only co-streamers as someone look that can distribute our content, but also create with us from the content to the, to the business side, definitely. Yeah. All right, so in my last interview with uh, John Needham, he had said that because uh, I had talked a little bit about sometimes teams leaving the the LCS like we saw with CLG, and he had said that you know sometimes you just have partners where their business interests do not align anymore. Uh, do you currently feel that Immortals business interests align with the LCS? Again, um, Immortals has been a great partner to us. It- Their organization is part of not only the League of Legends ecosystem, they're part of the Valorant ecosystem, and and again, they partner with us in in, in various titles. So right now, they are. Uh, Their competitive results have not been the best. And again, our rules around that are relatively clear. Uh, That being said, we can't go into detail on just conversations that we're, we're having with teams. Are you disappointed to know that Immortals is the only organization that is not activating here? Like, just because I know you said you view them as a great partner right now, at least in terms of, of the broader ecosystem, but on the LCS, I think many fans feel as though their competitive results have not been there. It does not seem as though they care as much about uh, participating in the LCS ecosystem. I see that sentiment demonstrated in their lack of appearance here at the LCS. I mean, at what point in time does the org fall below the standard that you would have for a business partner? We certainly would love for for all of the organizations to be here and partner uh, with us. Um, But unfortunately, you know, that is not the case uh, this time. And we hope that in the future, they'll make sure to, to, to participate with us not only in the finals, but around the content creation, around the promotion, and just the, the engagement uh, within the LCS. So just to be clear, as it stands right now, Immortals is an org with their competitive performance, with their participation in the ecosystem. They are meeting LCS standards for an LCS partner. Right now, uh, the conversations that we're... Uh, I mean, our rules are relatively clear. They state that we have certain processes and certain standards to maintain the competitive integrity and the competitive performance. The conversations that we have with them are are something that we cannot uh, go public with right now. Sure. So uh, on or switching away from the teams and more towards the LCS ecosystem as a whole, what kind of benchmarks do you have for the LCS right now in terms of where you want it to grow and where it should be at. Again, talking about benchmarks, again, we want to be the best league in the world. I mean, we're not happy with the current results. We are going to continue to make improvements and innovations. I think we've done a good job in terms of starting to create a product that is resonant, that is creating entertainment uh, as well as competition for, for, for our players. And in terms of where we want it to be, again, we'd love for 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 the LCS to be able to compete with the LCK, to the LPL. I mean, our aspirations are lofty. And, and again, we have a long road ahead of us. But again, we don't want to set our sights too low. We want to set the, 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 our sights to the highest possible standards. Uh, I think throughout this year, we've seen some moments where we have impacted our fans uh, in, in very positive ways. And we have... Uh, surprised them and we have uh, over delivered versus what was uh, like kind of expected in the past from us and, and and that's what we want that's where we want to go so we have created some some pieces some content pieces and we have uh, been wild in formats and that's that's the kind of thing that should be the normal and actually getting better and better should be should be more and more difficult we also did have some moments uh in terms of uh competitiveness this year that were really cool so we want to have this more as the normal lcs experience and we're going to be working in that direction so we also had some internal benchmarkings this year that have shown fans and players that we can get there that's still there that we are and and and, and we pull into the passion that's what we want every day every week to be and we know we can do it. 
Yeah, and I should say, as I think about benchmarks, I think a lot of folks are obviously focused on viewership. Uh, part of the reason I bring this up is because I think there's a broader conversation around, hey, what should viewership look like for North America? There's all this conversation around player base, right? Like, oh, is it okay that Europe has a lot more viewers for their leagues than maybe we do for ours because they're a much larger region? Uh, obviously, people feel that way with China, et cetera. So uh, maybe to more narrow in, what do you think the relationship is between the player base in a region and the esports league that it resides in? I can chime in. And, and again, I think this is relative to, to the region in particular. And for example, uh, the LLA is, is, is a league that has increased in viewership that is performing well that has a very large viewership, but the league itself hasn't been able to, to perform. However, fandom for esports within Latin America is demonstrated through their support of other leagues as well. So what we are also hoping to do with the LCS is not only focus on the North American player base, the North American player base is certainly going to be our main focus. It is a North American uh, league. However, I'm sure that there's an appetite for a good esports product across the world. We have players from Korea. We have players from China. How do we get players from those regions engaged with the LCS as well? We started to explore with LCS in Spanish to make sure that we're tapping into that fandom in Latin America. We're certainly going to explore a, a Portuguese feed of the LCS and why not even try other languages in the future? Again, I think there's an appetite for a good esports product regardless of the geographic look uh, geographical location of the league so you can see from the lck most of the lck viewership is actually from outside of korea because they have an interesting league because they have a good product we're aspiring to do the same for the lcs you mentioned the geographic location of the league setting us as the region are there any plans or considerations to move the lcs away from los angeles no all right. So no conversations internally happening about that at all. No. Nope. All right. Uh, th I also want to touch a little bit on uh, viewership. Obviously, we saw the move to weekdays this year, which was controversial, to, uh, say, the least. to say the least. It does not uh, seem as though viewership has borne out that this was a good move. And so you know, are there considerations to move the LCS back to a, a weekend schedule next year? Again, in all honesty, and again, being fully transparent, viewership is not where we want it to be. I mean, that's, that's a fact. That being said, we're still not ready to commit to a specific day, but we are taking into account fan sentiment. We are taking a, a, into consideration your comments. We are going to be taking a, account the numbers to make sure that we place the LCS in a good spot. But regardless of time, regardless of date, I think our main focus is also going to be in creating this compelling product. I think if you're able to create a compelling product, the date and the time fall into a second level of importance. Again, I'm not diminishing the importance of the move to a specific date and time of the week. We need to be sure that we're placing the product in a time and date that is relevant for our core audience. But that is, I think, not the only factor that's going to determine the success of the league. Well, that, I mean, Carlos, I know you had mentioned that you saw sentiment increase around the LCS. Uh, obviously, I don't have the same access to metrics and such that you all have, but anecdotally, it does feel like a lot of people are really excited about a lot of the content that's on the broadcast, et cetera. This is where whenever I look at that and I'm like, okay, it feels like the project is getting into a pretty good place and yet viewership is diminishing. It, it feels like then, at least to a lot of uh, folks outside, that that must be a scheduling issue, right? Like, why would you have viewership diminish as the product sentiment increases? So uh, there are some f specific things about uh, scheduling and programming that we are revisiting. Uh, we are checking and we're trying to get the right information from it. Uh, we also did see on the summer uh, split 
a lot of external factors compressing the schedule and making it really hard for us to get like the numbers out of it. But we do understand that uh, getting the getting the product better in terms of the content experience will help in what we call stickiness. Like people watch and they stay. They come for a match and they stay for the other because there will be additional content. They come back next week. So we are seeing these numbers of how healthy our viewership is now. Uh, but getting it to another level, like growing viewership, will come from us doing additional work. So we have to activate, we have to be better at marketing, at promotion. We have to find which are the regions that, uh, even within the NA, like that we have to create specific content on time zones and, and, and everything else. We have to work on uh, younger audiences, not necessarily new to League of Legends, but new uh, audiences that connect to other social media, other formats of content. So there's a lot of things that we have to do to 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 take this new product to them. And we have not done our best on the summer split uh, for external reasons uh, and also because we could not do it uh, on time. But we got learnings from all these things. So there's definitely some things that we're going to uh, analyze based on where and when the LCS is available, but definitely my uh, one of my biggest concerns is how can we better use the off season to come better and reach out to people who don't even know the LCS has changed, who don't even know that they have different kinds of content and their favorite streamer is actually doing a segment on the LCS. And those things will help us promote the LCS and get people to try it again. So this is this is the part I'm most, most concerned about, uh, but definitely they have to to consume it uh, in a platform, in a day, in a, in a time that has makes sense to them. So we still believe on the potential of the viewership of weekdays and different hours. We're definitely going to use on that, but we think that we do not reach out to people uh, on a way that they could come in and feel this new LCS. To, my, uh, to be very honest, I thought it would take us longer to find the right hand and the content and get fans really realize, oh, this is different like get spontaneously on YouTube and say, this is a different content. I would never expect them to do it. I thought it would, it would take us longer. And, and like one of the hardest parts, it's, it's already being felt by fans. Now I have to take it to more people. So there is definitely the scheduling, the programming discussions that we are going to have through the off season. But there is also like getting out there to people who in the last, the last years have not necessarily been uh, satisfied with the LCS getting them to try it again. So there are two different things on that that I think will bring the viewership back. So that's why we need this off season so much to make a bold plan because it's not just the product. We have to put it out there. We have to take it to players. I mean, looking at the viewership patterns right now, it feels like a lot of it, even as, as sentiment is increasing and perhaps people are learning about the LCS, I mean, viewership is, is going down dramatically, right? Like spring 2022, uh, esports chart says 123k average spring 2023 down to 110 uh, this summer of last year was 115 uh, this year it's down to just short of 75k now obviously we have the final match to be played uh, from an average perspective it feels like it's not going to do a lot to lift that up um, just because of the sheer amount of games right and so when you look at these numbers even if sentiment is increasing even if you can maybe reach out to some more people like things are sliding backwards. And after a year of sort of the experiment of weekdays, there's no opinion within Riot that, hey, maybe weekdays were a mistake? Uh, we, we do not understand weekdays were a mistake in terms of the data, but the, the, the feedback we're getting from players will cross all the, all the, all the decisions that we made. And we, we will plan accordingly to all the feedbacks that we got. Uh, we also see there was another factor this year, which is fandom across the teams has never been so much polarized. Like we do have teams with that have been aggregating the most number of fans while others do not. So scheduling also takes that into consideration when we build the days. Uh, sometimes we have to we have we have a very hard time to to get a match to call for the other. So there is also this and, and this is something that if our fans are not necessarily a team fan. They have to become an LCS fan to get the drive to come watch it. So this is also something we have to work again to how can we gain uh, 
the hearts of a fan who is not really connected to any team. So on one hand, we do promote this fandom, like we tell the stories that we want to tell and stuff, but also we have to create other reasons. So there are many, many factors. We're not saying that this doesn't that we do not have a, a, a very big additional challenge on the habit of the weekdays, but there are other factors that we also try to put in together. So we are revisiting all the information we have, and, and we do have the time to get all these things into a plan. Uh, but we think there's a lot of things that might cause, uh, might have been causing this disconnection from the product, uh, from like, is the format the best format? Are all teams driving my interests as as they should be and 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 are the platforms the right platforms that are broadcasting so we're trying to see all this uh and come up with a, with a plan so again we are revisiting all these discussions uh but we also have to come up with multiple plans for all these i i know you referenced that summer was kind of a weird split I looked at that and said, okay, so you need to do three three days a week. It feels like a good experiment to, to kind of compare and tra- contrast weekends would have been, hey, why don't instead of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we do Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So why was the decision to put the extra day on Wednesday rather than Saturday? VCT, we're looking, we're competing uh, in the same infrastructure, in the same building. So... Being able to piece together both of them on the same day is logistically very complicated. So we chose Wednesday. And again, Wednesday, in all honesty, is not the best day. And, and again, we saw that. And again, going back to 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 the initial part of it, there are some misses. There are some wins in general. We need to go back to the drawing board, like Kako mentioned, just get everything in line and come up with a solution for next year. Yeah. We should say Kako is your handle, uh, Carlos. Yes. Oh, yeah. did I? Uh, I okay, no, no, so good, for good. everyone, it's, yeah, Nick, Carlos. Nick yeah. Yes. Carlos is known as Kako. Kako for uh, English speakers is Kermit the Frog. Gotcha, okay. In, in, <laughs> in, in Portuguese, so that's his handle. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that for everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good, you're good. Um, Sort of, and, and probably a question for Carlos. Uh, this is an there's an interesting situation where in previous interviews, uh, John and Nas had made it clear that hey, we don't want, and I think even in the early beginning of the year, the messaging was we don't want fans to have to choose between watching two leagues on the same day. That is why we want to split LEC and LCS off on separate days. That's why I was surprised earlier the split when we started seeing CBLOL ads running for the weekends and i'm like okay the cb law now in english right is suggesting you watch two leagues on the same day right like hey lcs we moved your you off of saturdays and sundays to the weekdays so that you could watch lec and you didn't have to choose now here are two leagues again in english on the same day does that not seem somewhat contradictory i guess in messaging well, I, uh, there is a broader context for that, and like a really short answer is we are testing CBLOL's potential, so that's still us testing the affinity of CBLOL, just like we are promoting CBLOL during this test on Europe. So we know there is a cross-interest between the major leagues. So LEC and LCS fans, they do watch both leagues, and this is already an established behavior because those regions they do uh play against each other on many stages and and so this is this is a habit this is a thing and we're definitely trying to come up with the best plan for this so fans don't have to choose uh we are also promoting the lcs and the lec on cblaw so what we're doing now is that we are trying we are we are testing and this is constantly but now is something we're doing with CBLOL. Uh, what's the affinity of international audiences towards a different league so we can make the best scheduling and product decisions as well? Uh, the current interest and the, cr- the current like crossover between LCS and CBLOL is less than 5%. So it's total lack of awareness between the leagues. We have been already connecting and like when we finish our broadcast, we do deliver to the LCS playoffs. We've been doing this. We have been working and exploring some co-streaming uh, or even self-production LCS in Portuguese opportunities for next year because we know that we 
should bring the LCS as a global product to Brazilian fans. And on the other way, we are also exploring these uh, affinities. But the thing is, like, to make the better scheduling decisions, we have to explore this uh, potential overlap because today it's like almost 0%. Uh, either the language barrier or the distance that we had on global stages have put below on a very distant place. So LLA is more known in, in North America than CBLL. So this is all testing. And depending on what we find out, we'll make the, the best uh, scheduling decisions. But for example, we know we have already seen potential of LCS, of, for the LCS as a content for Brazilian players. So we're already exploring production decisions and how we can connect the two communities. The other way around is still something we're testing. So uh, for example, for now on CBLO in English, we have found more affinity in other uh, communities and not North American communities. And this will probably define what we're gonna do with the product in the future. So this was just a test to test the other way around because we already know that for the LCS in Brazil, there will be other solutions just like we had LCS in Spanish. But the LCS is a global product and we were testing how much of an interest for CB Law there will be and then we will start making the changes. Well, and what we saw last time was, or last year was, hey, there is overlap between LCS and LEC, so we don't, we don't want to put them on the same day. If it turns out that there is interest in CBLOL, does that mean that we're going to try to move all three of these leagues to separate days to avoid overlapping strategy? Because, I mean, that that seems to be the strategy at Riot, right? It's like, hey, we're going to draw this line in the sand. We don't want people to have to watch the same league or different leagues on the same day. And so, as you're saying, hey, we're exploring an opportunity to have LCS fans interested in CBLOL, it feels like the if you follow that philosophy out, the one that was uh, subscribed to last year, now none of these leagues can be operating on the same day. I, the idea is, as far as we find more uh, possibilities of fans to enjoy the global products, uh, we, are, we will try as best as we can to deliver as much as we can for them so they don't have to choose. That will not work uh, like indef indefinitely because there's, there is a limit on weekdays and stuff. Uh, so today, this is more focused on the products that we know there are global leagues. And we are still experimenting to see how, how trend is showing on the other ones. Like the viewership on CBLOW is growing. We want to see where it's growing to and if it has a potential to get somewhere else so we can make the decisions before. So, and, and, and just like it happened in the Pacific, with all the local leagues in the Pacific region, there is a, there is a very strong analysis all the time to see cross-regional interests, so the best format and scheduling decisions are made. So there is a world where if we start to see that we are generating conflict with the same viewer, the same fan, to watch different things, that we act on it to make it better. And again, it comes down to there's a limited number of days there are a limited number of leagues as well, and now we have to contend with leagues of legend, uh, League of Legends leagues around the world, Valorant, a number of very limited days, unless we can bring in an eighth day of the week. Some leagues are bound to overlap, and the decision to separate LEC and LCS, like Carlos mentioned, was because there was such a high overlap between the two. Again, we have to revisit those um, those decisions once we were able to analyze the numbers. But again, to the best of our abilities, we want to avoid these overlaps. All right. Uh, so one of the uh, interesting things is that in previous interviews, uh, Nas and John had basically said that, you know, hey, we is right. We're very committed to the LCS. We want the LCS to be around. We want it to be a thing. We're going to do a lot for it. And sort of pushing back against what was a lot of the sentiment and concern from the end of last year. Um, at the beginning of summer, the LCS players had suggested they would walk out. In response, Riot's, Riot said, hey, we will give them two weeks, and if we can't resolve this by then, we're going to cancel the league. So I think a lot of viewers looked at that and said, all right, you're willing to use the existence of the LCS this year as a bargaining chip to get players to come to the table. That does not feel as though Riot is, is as insistent on making sure the LCS can run as they have previously said. So I just wanted to give either of you the floor to sort of address what I think a lot of people had as a confusion on like, okay, well you say you really want LCS, but then, hey, if we can't figure this out in two weeks, it's just done. 
Again, I think the reasoning behind that was just making sure that the LCS as a product in League of Legends in North America was able to serve as teams, players, and the league as well. I mean, it's a very interconnected ecosystem. And if not all of the parties are seeing benefit from this and we're not able to partner forward, there was no way for us to continue the league. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it without the players. We can't do it without the teams. So if any of these components is lacking, then there's no point for the league. Our intent was for us to reach an agreement and reach a place where all three parties were in agreement, where we all aligned on a path forward. And that was the intent of that comment in general, is just making sure that we find common ground for us to exist and find that reason to actually have a league. Fortunately, we were able to come to a positive conclusion. We realized that players, teams, and Riot all have the same objective, which is the growth of the league, the prosperity of the league, the sustainability in the long run of the league. But if any of these components falters, then there's no reason for a league. I mean, it's a two-week period, right? I don't think that there was any... In the walkout messaging and all this conversation, it did not feel like the players were saying, hey, we don't care about this league anymore. It, it, as you said, you want all parties to be invested. It seemed as though a lot of their walkout was born out of desires to make sure that the league was uh, in a good place. And so whenever we had... Uh, but whenever Riot was insistent on a two-week period, I think that's where a lot of the confusion came from. And again, this was us canceling the split, not canceling the league for that specific time. If beyond those two weeks, we weren't able to get to a positive conclusion, then we wouldn't have the necessary time for us to carry out a league that would be fair, that would be competitive, and that would yield uh, 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 just a, a true and worthy winner. So, Carlos, I don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, yes, I, I think that just one thing is that we did progress a lot with the conversations through those those weeks, and we are still talking now through lots of uh, like processes and formal processes within the part. So the, all these has helped us find a working model that is constantly checking things. But we needed to quickly come to a point in the conversation between all the parts where we agreed what we would be acting on, where we would would agree not on all the things that we could talk together because this is a relationship that has to move for a long time. Uh, but what was the essential thing we had to do? So if we were not, and, and in, the, in the very beginning of conversations, we were not at that point. So we needed to focus the discussion to, to parts which we agreed would like player protections and player rights that we could move on time to still have a split. Because depending on how much these conversations went, there would be a time where we agreed on next steps, but we would not have time enough to have a split. So we, we needed to narrow down this to an alignment between uh, players, Riot, the teams, uh, on what we wanted to focus on. And, and we did it. So the two weeks was enough for us to align what, what we wanted. And we could implement during the split. Because all the things that we discussed, they are either already implemented or on their final lines off. And we already have a new list of things that we're working on. So we really needed to separate the immediate discussions to which we agreed. And that's why we brought the teams and that's why we adjusted regulations and contracts uh, and stuff uh, from the things that we do have to work in the future. So I think we had an event that put us all together to talk and this was a positive thing that we talk. But that specific moment was carrying a lot of things that would not be sorted out at the time of a split. So the two weeks was us to narrow down a scope. And once we agreed, we kept on working on the new policies and the rules, and we're working on them right now. So it's, it, I just wanted to say that we needed to focus on what was the most critical, and that would also show the goodwill of all, all the parts. Once we agreed on that, it was very much smooth to work. I, I know we're starting to run low on time, so I know we need to move on from this conversation. The really quickly thing, a quick question I want to get in here because it was always what I was confused about is MSI is like a three week long tournament. At the end of that, in a, a tournament with more teams than the LCS has, you're able to crown a winner and feel like you found a, a competitive 
competitively integral answer to this question of who is the best team with only having with the two weeks off, you still had uh, six weeks plus three. So nine weeks total. So about a two, little over two months. Why, why is it a situation where the LCS split had to be six weeks if in MSI or at Worlds in a shorter time frame, you're able to find a winner with more teams? MSI and Worlds are tournaments. They have a different format and structure. And mostly they have like matches all day. Yeah. And their format doesn't make all teams play like all days. And our format currently, it does have with the best of ones teams playing every day. So uh, when we checked on the way to run a, uh, an integer split with some relationship also with the other regions, with whom we're gonna play on the international stage. Sure. There were limits to what we could do on the on the formats. Uh, it was obviously a very good, interesting opportunity for us to think on innovative formats that we could not implement in a rush in the middle of the year, but we could think for the future. Right. But there was this difference on how much would we sacrifice competitive integrity to give it more times and then eventually a team play like four days in a row. Sure. And that would lead probably to a worse preparation or a different preparation to Worlds. So changing things by contingency in the middle of the year left us with a lot less room for changing. Gotcha. All right, I, we now have a very short time, so just maybe we'll speed run this stuff. Uh, LCS finals, are they going to continue to be in arenas next year? We saw LEC move to having a lot of their finals in the studios. Personally, I've just been really afraid that we're going to see LCS follow suit. We're still analyzing the 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 format that we're going to explore next next season. Is it going to be a three split format like the LEC? Is it going to be two? So that's going to lead into our strategy for live events. But next year we're still on 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 our way to have a, a events. So um, how that looks like, it's still to be determined. Uh, one of the points of feedback that I saw in a lot of uh, Reddit threads and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, was around the casters this year. Uh, I always think it's unfortunate when casters take a lot of heat from the audience just because it's shitty for the caster. Uh, what are What is Riot doing to make sure casters are set up for success and that they continue to grow in their, uh, their craft? So as we explored a more dynamic, more creative approach this year, we did have some challenges uh, to find our right voices and spaces. Uh, I'm happy that now we created the processes and the, and the relationships with the casters and the team so that we, we all have an active voice and we, to, to create what's best and then people feel more comfortable and also even to innovate. So we're getting better at this. The thing is like, as we try to push into creativity, uh, sometimes we took some time to adjust things and we, we missed some marks and stuff. So uh, we are now in a much better uh, collaboration system with the casters from the pitching to the creation to the execution and also very much aware of the risks of trying something. Maybe this requires a little bit more thinking. Let's try it for a couple of weeks more. Let's do it a rerun internally. So being creative has some risks and we all know it so now we are in a much more comfortable place to to try and take some time if we need some more time but the idea is that casters can contribute to us uh freely and also like is this the right step this is n this is not for me this is something i wanted to try so this comes with our new dynamic uh idea we definitely know that some some shots that we took do require some adjustments and we are doing that with them mm -hmm. so we are very much collaborating with them to do what everybody feels safe and what everybody wants to try and my last question here at the end uh we have been without a commissioner for about four months now um i think a lot of folks have been confused as to why there's not a commissioner posting i saw that went up right um i think ahead of this weekend uh and n knowing how long it takes for somebody to get hired at right um it I think a lot of people are concerned about how quickly a commissioner can come in and get set up and running. I mean, all the decisions I think for 2024 will already be made by the time this person steps into the role, uh, given timeline. So, so um, that's a good question. And uh, obviously, as as I mentioned, this is going to be one of Carlos's main responsibilities: is finding this LCS commissioner. Again, it's also on top of my priority list. So between the two of us, um, we're gonna be tackling this um, this hiring process. Even though the 
posting came in uh, this week, we have been actively defining what that role is. Carlos mentioned in the press conference as well that we are revamping what that responsibility would look like, what support this person uh, uh, who takes on this responsibility will receive from the rest of the team. And that took a little bit of time, but that doesn't mean that we haven't talked and started exploring uh, conversations with potential candidates. So it's not a process that's going to start right now. It's a process that started a few months ago. So um, even though we're, it looks like potentially we're only uh, starting right now, it's a process that's already on its way. Well, I know we're out of time, over time, actually. So I thank both of you for coming in and chatting with me. Hopefully, we can continue to have more of these conversations as we lead up to the 2024 season. Looking forward to uh, watching finals here in just a short time. Uh, I would normally give you guys uh, something to say here at the end, but if you wanted to say thanks or anything to folks really quickly, that would be great. Oh, thank you for the community. Thank you for the patience. Thank you for the support. Um, you have our full commitment to make sure that the LCS is back on top and is in a prominent position. So, uh, and thank you, uh, Travis, for having us. Happy yeah. to chat anytime. Yeah. Well, thank you for the conversation. We're definitely going to have more of these. Uh, and I'm really excited to help the LCS team. I mean, when I joined Riot, starting working on CBLL, LCS was a reference for us, and there's still so much cool stuff in there. And I've worked closely with the team this year, and I've seen this change. And we, we have so much more to do. We have so much more to deliver. We're going to make it. Yeah. Thank you so much for the interview. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Hey, everyone. This is Travis here at the LCS Finals. I hope you enjoyed my coverage. Uh, I just want to thank all of the members of this YouTube channel. There's a lot of you who are... Uh, you just spent $2.99 a month or $5. Well, it's like $4.99 uh, to support the channel. In exchange, you get to watch interviews, Some, maybe even this one, early. And a lot of people have been doing that lately. It's actually become a, a double-digit percentage of the revenue for this channel. Uh, so if uh, you do that, thank you very much. And if you want to join, you can hit that uh, member join button down below. It's not the subscribe thing. Uh, oh, Palafox is here, so i got to wrap this up. Bye.